Thor here. So today I wanted to talk about my uh, adventure in Lake Powell. So for reference, I am hauled out right now. I am on the dry and I will be going back to Lake Powell as soon as I can. I'm actually hauled out right now for some repairs and some upgrades and things like that. Believe it or not, I was only supposed to be in Lake Powell for a couple days when I set in, but everything just went so well I just kept on going. So for reference, I boondocked in Lake Powell for Oh, goodness, I think it was six weeks I boondocked. It was a long time. It was over six weeks. And uh, basically what I want to do is I want to make a video that describes what it was like for me, especially me being that I, I, I am on a liveaboard. I live on this boat. So what it was like for me, what the challenges were, and some of the good stuff. So I'm going to go into that, and I'll start showing you some scenery and things like that that... Uh, I seen and we'll go from there. So I will start out with my negative experiences and then transition into the positive as I don't want to leave a bad impression but instead more of a truthful one. To start out with I live on a 27 foot flybridge cabin cruiser. My boat is around 46 years old and has been heavily modified for full time living. It is still a work in progress and originally when I set into Lake Powell I had only intended to stay on the lake for a couple of days. During this time, I was going to take the opportunity to shake down the boat and maybe record a video. However, everything was working out so well, I decided to stay for longer. During my time, I learned a lot, not only about myself and my boat, but also the harsh reality of living on the water. Lake Powell is not a conducive place for full-time liveaboards like myself. If anything, I would say given the legalities and the, the way the marinas function, it is almost discouraged to live on the lake full-time. While in no way illegal, it is a bit tricky. Putting aside the legalities and unwritten rules, overall it is not impossible. It is just a lot of work and a lot of reward. The main detracting factor on Lake Powell is the lack of docks. There are no public docks on Lake Powell. This made simple things like going into town to get groceries almost impossible. I've been trying to get a dock for my vessel for months, and while some docks did become available, I was not able to afford them due to the fact in every case the docks that were available were for 40 plus foot boats. While these technically would work, I would have to pay almost double the price for these docks when I only need a 25 foot dock. The marinas offer reserve docks for the night, but they do not offer utilities and are priced around $30 a night. Antelope Marina has some free docks after 5 p.m., but Antelope Marina was out of my range for my given situation. That being the case, I had to boondock my vessel the whole time I was out on the water. Boondocking is not too bad, as long as you do not need a lot of electricity. On average, I would run my generator for around 4 hours a day. However, when the heat wave hit, I had to run my air conditioner for 12 plus hours a day in order to stay comfortable. I have animals on board, so for me it's not just a matter of my own personal comfort, but also for theirs. Dipping in the water was fun for the first couple of weeks, but that novelty wore off quickly, and being wet all the time became a real downer. Overall though, I would have no problems doing that instead of running my air conditioner, but my dog and cat were not able to do that. Running the gin for 12 hours with the AC on consumed about 3-4 to four gallons of gasoline a day. It was not an affordable situation as gasoline at the fuel dock is marked up by around $2 per gallon. In my case, the fuel dock sold fuel for $5.30 a gallon. Do the math and that is around $16 a day to run my hair conditioner. I should also note that my final decision to pull out was when the air temperature on the lake began to exceed 100 degrees in the shade. I spent about a week where every day the temperature exceeded 110 degrees and my AC at the time was only able to cool my cabin by about 10 degrees from whatever the temperature was outside. This meant that the temperature inside my boat was reaching over 100 degrees every day which led to a plethora of problems for me. The biggest problems was that my animals were getting too hot. And while the dog had no problems going for a swim to cool down, the cat on the other hand, not so much. Another issue I had was that my refrigerator would overheat and stop working. I could not charge any of my electronics, like cell phones during the day, as they too would overheat. My computer was able to function but at a reduced speed as it was thermal throttling under any kind of load. As if all of this was not bad enough, I could not sleep at night because the temp at night was in the mid 90s till about 3 o'clock in the morning. And that was on the outside of my boat. Suffice to say, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and I had to haul out to install a better air conditioner. But my negative experiences did not stop there. Surf boats are plentiful on this lake, and while I'm not speaking for all of them, I will say that they made the need to find sheltered coves an absolute must as dealing with 3 foot wakes all day gets tiresome. 
Every day when I was not in a sheltered cove, many surfboats would pass within 15 to 30 feet of my vessel multiple times a day. At one point, I had a surfboat pass within 7 feet of my vessel while I was on anchor. He crossed my anchor line. That same surfboat went between several kayakers and thrashed all of us with its wake. I could see the owners were smiling ear to ear as they turned around to watch the chaos they had created. In addition to that, I have also had the surfboats charge me while I'm riding my PWC. As in, they would make course corrections to intercept me until I made an extreme course correction like turning 90 to 180 degrees and literally running away from them. Throughout my whole life of boating, I have never seen such reckless behavior committed with one specific type of boat. It is always important to remember it is not the boat, but the person driving it. Unfortunately, this particular type of boat must attract a lot of that one particular type of person, as I have had similar experiences well over a thousand miles away. The next negative I'd like to talk about is mooring, landing, anchoring, etc. Lake Pal can be a tad tricky to moor a vessel. For one, anchoring out in the middle of the lake or channel is not a good option. Even though it is possible to secure a boat, and quite possibly the easiest option, other boaters will drive over the anchor lines. With the majority of boats, they use floating anchor line, which means if there is no wind, a lot of the line that is attached to the anchor is floating on the surface of the water. And since most boaters in this lake do not know to give a boat at anchor a wide berth, there is a high probability of another boat cutting your bow and fouling their prop in your anchor line. This almost happened to me once. I was in the middle of the lake and a open runabout was cruising past me. He had to go full throttle reverse when he saw my line floating in the water directly in front of his path. I only noticed when I saw him go into reverse, but to be clear, he was cutting in front of my bow very closely, probably within 10 to 15 feet. After that, I did not moor in the middle of the lake anymore because I just realized inevitably it was going to be a problem. However, my vessel weighs around 7,000 pounds and is about as aerodynamic as a brick. Handling my vessel by myself while setting land anchor lines and underwater anchor is a huge task for me to perform. I have to wait for extremely ideal conditions to not only set my anchors, but to also retrieve them. Mooring in coves makes this task even more work as the boat is limited on space for it to swing on its main anchor while I set up the land anchors to secure the vessel. Suffice to say, wind was my biggest enemy, and on Lake Powell it is plentiful. At least once every three days there was a minor windstorm, and during my six weeks I endured three actual storms in which the winds exceeded 60 miles per hour. I never would have thought the first storm I would have endured on my boat would be a sandstorm, but lo and behold it was. To this day, I have never been in a rainstorm, well, I should be clear about that, I have been in a very light rainstorm, but not a true, you know, downpour rainstorm. However, I have endured more sandstorms than I can count. I bear witness to two lightning storms and several windstorms. If you do not have adequate anchors, you will be in a losing situation like I was when I had my first windstorm in which there were 60 plus mile per hour winds that were sustained for over four hours. I was in Martini Cove when this happened, and my boat came off its anchors and dragged its main anchor over 30 feet. During this time, my boat dangled on its anchor and whipped back and forth in Martini Cove, hitting one side of the cove and then the next. I attempted to take control using the engine, but that was futile, as I could not man the anchor and the engine by myself. Running a boat on anchor is dangerous, as that can lead to a prop becoming fouled in the anchor line. And since I could not gain any forward momentum due to the fact I would entangle my propeller in the anchor line, I could not maneuver. I was also in danger of hitting a nearby vessel, named Mistress, as I was dangling on my anchor and being pulled in her direction. By some chance a miracle from God, the wind pushed my vessel into the outcropping of the cove, which was soft sand. I jumped off the boat when this happened and grabbed the bow and stern docking lines and held her to the shore as best I could. I used my flashlight and signal to the mistress for help in which they sent two of their men. The two men helped me secure the boat to the shore and they lent me two of their land anchors for the night. The next day I thanked them as much as I could and gave them a bottle of Maker's Mark. After that I went and purchased anchors I know can hold my boat in just about anything. However, since I do not have thousands of dollars to buy super nice anchors, I went the cheap, crude, but surprisingly effective route of four T-posts, a puller, and a pounder. For anyone wondering, this method was recommended to me by someone who did it for years with a 75-foot, three-story houseboat. For my boat, it should be complete overkill, and so far, that has been the case. The main reason I was not prepared for this is because, again, Lake Powell does not have a public dock. Where I am from, all the lakes have public docks. I was very surprised to see a lake as developed as Lake Powell is lacking such a thing. If I were in the lake from where I was from, I would have sought shelter at the dock. 
during those storms instead of seeking a, sh a cove or something like that. I know a lot of people would be put off by what I just said here, but again, I wanted to get the negatives out of the way first. Now I want to talk about the good stuff. Amidst all of the negatives, trust me when I say they are all worth enduring to be on Lake Powell. The views are amazing. I spent most of my time around Lone Rock, and to be 100% honest, that is the boring and overpopulated part of the lake compared to the rest of the lake, and it is still amazing. The sand in Lake Powell is better than the sand you can find on the whole west coast. It is soft powder sand and sand flea free. Hiking here is also amazing. You'll be greeted with every degree of difficulty you could want. The trails are plentiful and beautiful. There are almost no major predators and as far as I know, no true attacks on people at Lake Powell. Many places here are like a fairy tale, truly unimaginable. Some of the coves in this lake are so ideal for spending a week or two in that I have never seen anywhere else in the world where people have shown places like you can find in Lake Powell. There are no houses on the lake, which means you really get to experience every cove without feeling like you're in someone's backyard. Privacy is plentiful and abundant. There's a huge party scene at Lone Rock, so if you like to socialize, you can. Typical of most lakes and rivers, the boating scene is, for the most part, extremely positive and upbeat. The people here are almost always friendly and willing to help if you need it. The lake has the bare amenities to survive on, primarily fuel, water, and dumping stations. Sheltered coves are abundant on this lake, something I've never seen on any other lake. There is great fishing on this lake. It is very sunny here. This lake has islands, which can be a lot of fun to visit. Overall, I spent a lot of time on the lake, and even during the bad times, I still enjoyed a lot of it. From the cozy feeling I would get when there was a crazy sandstorm and I was sitting in my boat watching a movie to the time I spent driving my PWC down Navajo Canyon when it rained, every day I was on the lake I'd wake up in disbelief I was in such a wonderful place. One of the things I found quite pleasant is I had no worries or thoughts that people would be around. Seldom did I ever have neighbors and at nighttime it was always quiet. The first couple of weeks it was difficult for me to sleep on the boat only because the motion, however, after that I began to sleep better than I have ever slept in my life. Having a huge moat around my house really did make me feel secure. Given that I was basically living on my boat full time by myself, I will admit that I did feel lonely. Something to understand about me is that I like feeling lonely. Not all people would be able to handle that, and most people certainly do not like it, but being lonely for me is a wonderful feeling. In my time, where I had zero thoughts of other people bothering me, I continued to write in my book, and I played a lot of music. I spoke to God often, as this place is a very spiritual place. The only thing I discovered about myself is how tough I was. It seemed like every other day there was a new bruise on my body, a new blister from pulling on ropes, or something. I suffered numerous small cuts, and honestly, I have no idea how I got them. Towards the end of my stay, I was more or less done seeking adventure and realistically just was looking for shelter. I was tired of wondering if my boat would come off its anchors and the water is extremely bipolar. Fortunately, Lake Powell had me covered. I was able to find a cove where I could tie up like I was at a dock and I stayed there for almost two weeks. But then the heat rolled in and I had to haul out. If I had a slip in one of the marinas, I doubt I would have hauled out even though my boat was in need of repairs. Living on the lake is great, but boondocking full time is difficult. Even if the marinas offered dinghy or PWC parking, it would have been a lot easier, but unfortunately that was not an option. I have every intention of getting back into the water, and next time I'm going to plot a course up Antelope Canyon to Navajo Canyon and continue my adventure there. I hope this segment was helpful in some way. This is Thor, signing out.